Conjugate Roots Theorem, Example 1. If z is equal to 1 plus 5i is a root of the equation az squared plus bz plus c equals 0, given that a, b and c are all real numbers, find the values of a, b and c. So we're given a root of a quadratic equation. We do know how to form a quadratic equation if we had the roots. What we know is that z squared minus the sum of the roots times z plus the product of the roots must equal zero. This is useful around quadratic equations. We're given one of the roots that z is equal to one plus five i. According to the conjugate roots theorem, we also know another root because if z is equal to one plus five i is a root or solution to an equation, well then, as long as a, b, and c are real, it must be true that the conjugate of z, that is one minus five i, must also be a root of the equation. So let's work out the sum of the roots first. If we add z1 and z2, or z and z bar in this case, we have one plus five i been added to one minus five i. This adds up to two. So the sum of the roots is two. The product of the roots. If we multiply z by its conjugate, we always end up with the difference of two squares when we do this. We have one plus five i been multiplied by one minus five i. So this is going to be equal to one squared minus five i to b squared. Square one, we get one, and square five i, we get negative 25, because it's 25 by i squared, which is negative one. So altogether, this is 26. So we can write our equation now. So we have z squared minus the sum of the roots, that's minus two by z, plus the product of the roots, 26 equals zero. So in this equation, we're saying a is one, b is negative two, and c is 26. There are, of course, an infinite number of solutions to this because any multiple of this quadratic will also yield the same solutions.